is because doctors usually dispense it and mark it up because they feel like if I'm going to be giving this out and prescribing it, and there's a huge risk legally for giving it, that at least I'll make some money doing it. So they're going to charge you 500, 1,000 bucks a month to do it. I give very little growth hormone in my practice. I think I may have two people on it right now. Growth hormone is a great thing when used properly, but the best way to do it is to actually get an arginine stimulation test. We take arginine and still it IV, which stimulates the pituitary to produce growth hormone because it only has a half-life of about 10 minutes in the blood. So you give the stimulation test, you check your blood a few times over a couple hours, and you see what the actual growth hormone level is. Very few docs do that. When you find out that it's low, and I'll bet half the people in here have low growth hormone, at least, probably more, um, then we can supplement it. Insurance actually pays for it when it's documented. So adult growth hormone deficiency. Legally, we can only give growth hormone when we have this. A lot of doctors just give it out because it attracts patients, and they can make fortunes in selling it. What do we get with low growth hormone, adult growth hormone deficiency syndrome? There is a child syndrome, you know, short stature. That's how growth hormone was used initially. Makes kids grow. Six inches, eight inches taller. But for us older guys and women, when it starts dropping, we get weight gain, ab abnormal body composition, increased fast fat mass, increased abdominal, intra and extra fat, decreased lean body mass, poor collagen synthesis, thin skin, weak tendons and joints. The discs in our spine start to shrink down, we get shorter. Any parents of yours start to shrink when they got older? Yeah, the discs just dry up. Decreased bone mass, osteoporosis. Atherogenic lipid profile. You know, lipids go out of whack, we get atherosclerosis and heart disease. Increased cardiovascular risk. Other signs are increased fatigue, frailty, and fracture. Social, social is isolation, depression. You know, when people have the syndrome, they don't really have the energy to go out and make friends or be with people. There's a process we call involution as people get older and these hormones decrease where they, they're just pretty happy sitting in a room. You know, they're used to not talking to people and just being alone. They don't really have the energy to get out and do things that are good for them. It's not fun to see, see someone who's really in that state, but it's common. You walk into an assisted living center or nursing home, most of the people are kind of to themselves. You appear to be suffering from premature aging, poor performance at work, bone mineralization, low. Psychological impairment, reduced quality of life. So it is a good thing, but it has to be used properly. So by age 65, an estimated 50% of the population is partially or entirely growth hormone deficient. That's huge. By the time we're in our 70s, it says 38% of adults are as deficient in growth hormone as growth-challenged children. So growth hormone does all of these things. There's a 7 to 10% increase in muscle mass without exercise. This is done in people that don't exercise, just couch potatoes. Also, at the same time, decreased fat mass, <clears throat> 10 to 14% within six months of therapy. It's not because people are out changing their nutrition or exercising more. It's just the growth hormone does that. There's a doctor I met who I hadn't seen in about 30 years, and he had a full head of hair. He used to be bald. I said, what happened to you? And he said, oh, you mean the hair? He said, I've been doing growth hormone 10 years. I don't find that common, but you do see things like that happen. There's a reversal, it seems, in aging. Accelerated wound healing. Orthopedic surgeons are now using growth hormone and testosterone after surgeries. Very smart because it increases the healing response. Increases immune system function. There's been cases of actual regrowth of the thymus gland, which is, you know, when you're, we're young, the main immune function we have. Improved sleep, improved vision, improved mood. How many people want it? Yeah. Improvement of cardiac function. Electro Echocardiomyography has shown left ventricular mass index, which means as we get older in the left part of the heart, which is the very muscular part, um, contracts. There is actually an improvement in that. There's a greater increase in what we call the ejection fraction. So the heart remodels itself. 
It's one of the safest drugs we have. The doctors I know that dispense it have never had a cancer from it. Now you'd think growth hormone equals cancer, right? If there's a cancer, it's going to grow. Not necessarily. Nine months of growth hormone treatment reduced total body fat and resulted in specific and marked decrease in both abdominal, subcutaneous, and visceral adipose tissue. Moreover, increased insulin sensitivity. That means you don't need as much insulin to get the job done, to get the, sh the sugar in your system into the cells to create energy. Now, you have to be careful if anyone does start growth hormone. If you have diabetes, there can be a kick up in sugar for a while. So you start a very low dose, increase very slowly, and there's no problem. Improvements in exercise capacity. So we actually improve how much exercise we can do. As we get older, we don't want to exercise as much. Why is that? Because we can't? No, we can. It's just harder to do it. It hurts more. We get exhausted a little more easy. We don't recuperate as fast. Growth hormone helps people do that. Bone mineral density in lumbar spine, L2 through 4, and femur neck down here, hip fractures, compression fractures in the back, increased the actual amount of the bone mass. Let's get into DHA a little bit. Anyone pronounce that? So this is a very small hormone profile of where the hormones go. So from testosterone, we have DHT, dihydrotestosterone. We have estradiol, which can convert to estrone. Androstenedione is the hormone that baseball players used to take. Testosterone was illegal, so what'd they do? They bumped up on a precursor in a pill, ate tons of it, and they'd come back in the next season, they'd have 20 pounds more muscle. They test them because they thought they had testosterone increase. They find out there was testosterone increase, but none of them were taking testosterone. So what they do to androstenedione? It's illegal. Can't get it anymore because they were using that as another way to cheat in sports. DHEA can convert to these also. Now in females who have lupus, what do we give them? Some docs give 200 milligrams of DHEA every day, which is a very high dose for women. Usually we start women out with about 10 milligrams. But you can do a shot of testosterone in a small dose to get the same effect, because the DHEA in high dose really just converts to testosterone. And that can help get rid of lupus, which is a terrible disease. This is the decline of DHEA with age. You know, we start low, we get higher, and then whoop, just like all the others, down to nothing. So the decline in DHEA concentrations with aging led to the suggestion that DHEA sulfate, that's that little s, can play a role itself in being implicated in longevity, also involved with excellent immune function. So we find that people that have a lot of DHEA in their system seem to live longer. Since chronic inflammation, I want you to really get this, inflammation we're finding now is the root of all chronic disease. Since chronic inflammation contributes to the development of the diseases of aging, namely heart disease, Alzheimer's, certain types of cancer, supplementation with the DHEA combined with conventional treatment has been suggested to be potentially therapeutic for improving the quality of life across a wide range of illnesses. It's an easy way out, isn't it? Take a pill a day. A decent dose of DHEA will decrease plasma cortisol levels. Cortisol is one of the stress hormones. We don't want a whole lot of it. We need enough of it. Uh, most people that come to my practice already have burned their adrenals out. They at one point had very high cortisol, and then the adrenals just go whoop. No cortisol coming out anymore. I had to put one person in the hospital for that. It's fatigued for years. No one thought to do an adrenal cortisol check. We did it. He didn't have much. Stuck him in the hospital, put him on prednisone, and immediately felt better. It's not something that I hope we have to do with many people. And we can actually heal up the adrenal glands with herbs. It takes a while, but it can be done. So DHEA, again, will lower cholesterol, improves blood vessel function, lowering risk of heart disease, improves insulin sensitivity, improves mental and physical sexual arousal, increases bone density, increases fat-free mass, all the things we want. Weight control, fat burning, all the things we were talking about. Thermogenesis it raises up the body temperature a little bit to get the fat burning. DHA provides stress support, reduces the stress hormone cortisol, reduces some of its catabolic effects on bone and muscle. Now when our cortisol is high, 
it's very much akin to if someone takes prednisone. anyone